Okay, today I want to react and give you some takeaways from the new AP Top 25 for week three, and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about week three's AP top 25 rankings. First caveat here. The Big Ten is not eligible for votes. They will be eligible next week, a month out before they are scheduled to play games. That does mean that we are still entertaining the SEC among others. So Big Ten fans, yes, Ohio State will probably be back at number two this time next week. But let's go through them after a week of games that for the most part exposed the Big 12 and then showed us there might be a little bit of depth to the ACC. So Clemson is at number one after demolishing Citadel 49-0. to I thought what was most interesting about that is Dabo Swinney went up to the Citadel head coach and said, hey, let's do a running clock in the second half. He said, no, sir. We are coming to get your money's worth. We want the game. And I understand that because none of these games are promised. You want to get as much football in as you possibly can, even if it's Citadel playing against Clemson. At number two, Alabama, they begin their season this Saturday against Missouri. I'm very excited about that. The Eli Drinkwitz era at Missouri is going to be off to, well, a bit of a weak start as he's probably going to be out without some players. We're going to get to see Sean Robinson, though, and Sean Robinson transferred from Texas Christian. I really liked him. He was one of the highest committed prospects ever to Texas Christian. Then Zach Evans became the first five-star prospect to commit and sign with Texas Christian after a saga of recruiting. Now, Alabama also got Mac Jones. We know about Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, Najee Harris, Patrick Sertain, Dylan Moses, DJ Dale, and on it goes. Alabama's still my pick to win the national championship. We'll see if Ohio State can even get to the eight or nine games it might take for them to be eligible for the playoff. Number three, Oklahoma sticks off of a bye week after beating up on FCS Missouri State. They opened Big 12 play this weekend against Kansas State, the same Kansas State that took an L to Arkansas State in Bill Snyder Family Stadium, which means not only did Arkansas State rock out with a W, they walked up with $550,000 of Bill Snyder, K-State's, money. And then they had to cancel a game for this weekend because they got the COVID. My goodness. Number four, Georgia. Again, they start this week. I'm here for Georgia versus Arkansas. I'm, I'm very excited about that game. I want to see what this Arkansas team looks like. I want to see what this Georgia team looks like. And more to the point, I want to see who the quarterbacks are. Felipe Franks feels like the dude and probably going to be the dude to start against Arkansas, but we might see some K.J. Jefferson. We'll see. Malik Hornsby might be able to get in there in garbage time. I really liked him when he committed back to North Carolina. Him being in that beer and shoot with Kendall Browles is going to be a lot of fun in a couple of years. Whether it's Dwan Mathers or J.T. Daniels, the story is going to be the running backs and Todd Munkin calling the plays for Georgia's offense, and the Georgia defense will be the Georgia defense that I expect it to be. Will they be able to come out of the SEC East again? We'll see what Florida has to say about that. Speaking of Florida, they're at number five. Dan Mullen's squad is trying to get over the hump that is the world's largest cocktail party. They beat Georgia. We would all expect them to be in the SEC championship and have an opportunity to play in something other than a New Year's Six Bowl, maybe even play in the college football playoff. Number six, we got LSU. Again, lots of questions need to be answered for LSU against the Mississippi State team that is going to throw the ball all over the yard. K.J. Costello, grad transfer quarterback for Mike Leach, and they have what I think is the best tailback in all of the SEC in Kylan Hill. We'll see how Mike Leach chooses to deploy him. The Miles Brennan era is going to start against them. We'll see what that means for Scott Linehan as the passing game coordinator, but more to the point, Bo Pelini as the defensive coordinator. He's going to start Jabril Cox in the middle. We know who Jacoby Stevens is. We know who Derek Stingley Jr. is. Let's see if Elias Ricks and Cordell Flott have it to go in that secondary and what that defensive front actually looks like. I'm intrigued to see what Ed Orgeron's squad can do against Mississippi State. Number seven, Notre Dame after beating and stomping a mud hole in South Florida. Ian Book didn't have a whole hell of a lot to do, didn't have to throw the ball around a lot. USF has a new head coach in Jeff Scott, former Clemson offensive coordinator. They weren't going to be any good this year anyway. Notre Dame starts in earnest. Next week, after starting with Duke, USF, we'll see what they look like in their third game. Texas at number eight. Texas going to open this 
Big 12 season as one of the two teams that we expect to actually win the Big 12 championship and one of the two teams that is still carrying the Big 12 mantle in such a way that we expect them to be good. The rest of this conference, quite honestly, is in a dumpster fire, right? And to the point there, we'll talk about Oklahoma State and where they are in a little bit. Number eight, Auburn. Again, they're going to start up against Kentucky. I'm excited about that. Perhaps we might get to see a really great defensive game. We know that Mark Stoops' defense is pretty good. We know that Kevin Steele's defense is good. I'm excited to see whether or not Kalen Newton plays some wide receiver and what Gus Malzahn can do with this offense. To, to say that what Chad Morris can do with this offense, because I'm not sure that Chad Morris is going to be able to keep the play calling privileges for very long. Number 10, Texas A&M. Man, this might be the highest Texas A&M is ranked all year. Just because they're playing the SEC West, and I don't know what to do with Kellen Mond, who has an identity crisis and never has had his identity stolen. Number 11, we got North Carolina, Mac Brown, North Carolina. They were supposed to play Charlotte last weekend. They had that game canceled due to COVID. They're supposed to challenge Clemson for the ACC championship. I think they got a good team, but it took them until like midway through the fourth quarter to show it. I would like to see Sam Howell have that kind of play throughout an entire year as opposed to just, you know, the fourth quarter against Syracuse. Number 12, Miami. After an outstanding showing against the Louisville team that a lot of people expected to be in the ACC title game, we have to actually talk about the U and whether or not it's back. I know it's just two games, but De'Aaron King has looked great in both. The first game, the rush for over 300 yards. In this game, Rhett Lashley and De'Aaron King were able to pass for over 300 yards, expose that Louisville defense, even as Tutu Atwell had a great game. Malik Cunningham had a really good game, and J.B. and Hawkins looked the part. So, good deal for Miami. Central Florida at number 13. They, they're doing what they got to do to try to make it into the playoff, let alone on New Year's Six Bowl. They beat Georgia Tech, who gives, you know, the win against Florida State. So, the transitive win for Central Florida. Is Central Florida the best team in Florida? Maybe. I would really like to see Florida and, or excuse me, Florida, Miami and Central Florida play each other, but that's probably not, never going to happen. Cincinnati at number 14 after beating up on Austin P. Who hasn't beaten up on Austin P. Austin P. had a running clock against Pitt last week. Who got a win this week, by the way. And we got to start talking about Kyle in a way that a lot of people aren't talking about Kyle. That might be the best quarterback nobody is talking about in the way that they're throwing the ball around. Number 15, Oklahoma State. I wouldn't have kept them here. I might have kicked Oklahoma State out of the top 25 if we had all 129 teams. Certainly, if we had the Big Ten to rank here, they looked horrible against Tulsa. Winning that game 16-7 to in a game where the spread was 23 and a half. Spencer Sanders is no longer the guy. It has to be Shane Illingworth. If Mike Gundy trots Spencer Sanders back out there, he's looking to lose. And you can't do that with this truncated schedule where you are expected to be the third best team in this conference with an outside shot to win the conference championship. Reggie Bush and Desmond Howard both put Oklahoma State in the college football playoff. Goodness me. At number 16, we got Tennessee. Again, they're going to open up their season later this week, but we'll see if they can even field the squad. But if they can field the squad, they ought to be good. Cade Mays got his waiver to play right away after playing at Georgia last week, last year, transferring away. I expect them to be decent, if not good. Memphis at number 17. They've had two games that they've had to postpone or cancel since contracting the COVID after a win against Arkansas State. Ryan Silverfield's got a good team. You just got to be able to put it on the field. Brigham Young at number 18, still living off that Navy high where the 27-year-olds beat up on the 20-year-olds. I make jokes, but that Brigham Young team looks really good. I'm excited to see what they look like here in the future. ULL looked like they were hung over against Georgia State, but pulled it together late to go 2-0. They stick around at number 19, just where they were last week. I'm excited to see whether or not they can keep this going, especially after Appalachia State took a loss, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Vitek at number 20. <laughs> Hasn't played anybody in the ACC. And still, nothing. Like, they were supposed to have this game against Virginia that was going to be really good. But now, it must be great to have never played anybody. We're in week three, and you're ranked number 20. I don't think the Vitek's one of the 20 best teams in the country, even with 76 teams playing or scheduled to play. Now 90 scheduled to play big-time uh, big college football this year. Number 21, Pitt, again. I think they're right where they need to be. Pitt might be able to backdoor into perhaps contention for the ACC title. It's becoming the most compelling league because they're the ones that have laid the least amount of eggs and have the most wins. Army at number 22. Army could go undefeated and still not make the playoff. Kentucky at number 23. Again, we'll see what they do against Auburn. Louisville at number 24 after taking the loss to Miami. Okay, I'll allow it. 
even though Scott Satterfield knows how to call exactly four plays. And then Marshall at number 25, off a win against Eastern Kentucky in a ranked Appalachian State. I don't know what to do with Marshall because they were able to throw for a bunch of yards in their first game. And then we saw DJ Knox, the dude they called the dump truck, was able to have his way with the Appalachian State defense. Others receiving votes. Baylor with 89, West Virginia with 59, SMU with 57. Put up over 700 yards of offense, 60 points. I might rank them. That's just me. Texas Christian at 30. Virginia had 30. Boston College had 23. Arkansas State had 20. Mississippi State at 6. UAB had 5. Texas Tech had 5. Ole Miss had 4. Appalachian State had 3. UTSA had 2. Troy had 1. And East Carolina got 1 after beating up on Campbell. And beating up on Kansas. Like the Sun Belt is reigning supreme. All right. I'm fine with this. I don't see any real trouble here, except with the Oklahoma State and the Vautech thing. But outside of that, it's all going to be on a wash next week anyway, because one, the SEC will have played games, and two, the Big Ten will have the opportunity to be ranked, which means that Ohio State, Penn State, Minnesota, Michigan, maybe even Iowa, Wisconsin, all probably end up in there. All right. That is it for me. Deuces.